Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into my latest video. If this is the first time you're watching one of my procedures, please do feel free to um, like, comment, share. Um, if you're watching YouTube, um, you can also subscribe to the channel and select the bell icon so you'll get notified as and when I upload new videos. And um, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, please do uh, like and follow the page. So we have a client here who suffers from chronic otitis externa. Um, this is the right ear. Now, when we um, show you the left procedure, the patient is suffering from granular myringitis, and we'll, we'll discuss that a bit more when we um, show you the left ear. So what we're doing here on the right side, I'm just using a fine end gauge, and I'm delicately removing layers of dead skin directly off the ear canal wall, so we have to be very delicate um, we don't want to be applying too much pressure on the canal wall. Um, if we're on the outer third where we are now, this is the cartilaginous portion. So the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal is made up of cartilage, um, some muscle, fatty tissue, and a bit of a thicker layer of skin, about one millimeter in thickness. So we can apply some pressure. Now where we are here, this is literally just into the entrance of the ear canal on the rear. And there's a little crater here. And this patient in the past, um, had developed a canal cholesteratoma. Um, so a canal cholesteratoma is when you get a buildup of dead keratin skin, typically in a crater like this, and this skin doesn't migrate, it collects, it gets hard and it gets infected and it starts eroding the ear canal and all the structures around the ear. So it can be very dangerous, it can almost be life-threatening. So for this reason, this patient uses sodium bicarbonate drops on a regular basis to help soften any dead keratin. However, sometimes by using um, sodium bicarbonate drops on a regular basis, you do also run the risk of um, developing an ear infection because sodium bicarbonate drops is um, slightly alkaline in pH, whereas the, the normal pH of the ear canal is slightly acidic and the acidity helps um, inhibit certain bacterial growth. And sodium bicarbonate drops also contains water. It's a water-based drop, so water for the ear is bad. I always tell my patients, um, water in the ear is like kryptonite for Superman. Um, Gonna stay well clear from it. So unfortunately, the patient's a um, bit of, a, bit of a, um, a quagmire here. So they need to use the drops on a regular basis to, to soften this dead keratin because that because of that crater, that any dead keratin that dies and sheds and migrates from the ear canal, it is unfortunately going to collect in that crater. Uh, the patient may undergo surgery. There has been discussions to kind of patch up, put some fatty some fatty layer into that crater to build it up to help the natural migration of skin out. Um, but unfortunately, at the moment, getting an ENT appointment during the pandemic is very very difficult. So what I'm trying to do is just remove as much dead skin, uh, this infected skin as possible. Some of it is still really crusty. There's a bit mid canal on the base that's extremely hard and it's impossible to remove that. So the patient will use some more drops and return. Um, there is also a dead layer of skin that's coating the ear canal and that's got wet as well because of the sodium bicarbonate drops. I'm just using the fine end and I'm just trying to remove as much dead skin directly off the eardrum and when the anterior recess here and you can see what I've done there's a bend in the tube so I've actually um, created a probably about a 30 degree bend on the fine end gauge and that, that enables me to enter the anterior recess without that bend the fine end gauge will make contact with the anterior canal wall and that portion of the anterior canal wall is bony so it'll be very uncomfortable so and I'm just peeling some dead skin off the posterior canal wall. We are on the bony part of the ear canal, um, where the distal end to the tip of the suction probe is. It's just going to be so careful here. I know a lot of people comment, why don't you use hooks and scoops on the canal wall and people in, uh, I think, uh, the Far East, some of the videos there. Uh, you can, I, cannot, I can almost guarantee some of these videos where you see hooks and scoops being used against the canal wall, uh, especially uh, the bony part of the canal wall, the patients either have got local anesthesia or some vaginal anaesthetic, it's just so uncomfortable. So there's no way a patient uh, without any anaesthesia will be able to tolerate like, making direct contact with the bony canal wall. 
We're not going to remove every little last bit of dead skin here. It's it, we just have to wait for some of it to naturally shed. But you can see the eardrum now. It's a lot more apparent. It, it was almost camouflaged before by the layer of dead skin. Um, so uh, quite happy with that. The patient can hear again now. This is the the more uh, interesting one. Um, so if you look at the thumbnail uh, of it, in, the patient's got. Uh, granulation myringitis, um, also known as granular myringitis. So myringitis is uh, granular uh, myringitis is the formation of uh, new connective tissue and microscopic blood vessels or capillaries, um, typically as a result of a wound uh, or trauma and infection on the eardrum. And what you see are these kind of patches, rough um, lay layers and patches of red tissue really and it's, when I look at it you'll see it will be revealed in a moment when I clear all this dead keratin off the eardrum, it does put the hairs on the back of my neck up and I see it, it just gives me that kind of, um, yeah, um, funny sensation at the back of my neck, the hair stand up, it just looks a bit gruesome to me. Um, you can say granulation tissue can get any part of the body, but um, typically within the ear, it's normally on the eardrum or on the ear canal, the medial ear canal near, near the eardrum, so the bony part. And as I said, it's uh, it's part of the, the healing process as such. So when you've got a wound, it's only got trauma to the eardrum. You can get formation of new connective tissue um, that can extend laterally. So out in the ear canal, but also immediately, so it can go into the middle ear. And um, so you can see I'm just delicately peeling a layer of dead skin, keratin directly off the eardrum. And again, there's no local anesthesia here. We have to be very gentle and delicate. And yeah, and this granulation tissue also, obviously it has its own blood supply. And you can see it there. Um, again, I'm just watching it now, and my hair's in the back of my neck and stood up, just, just seeing it again, reminding myself of it. Now, how to treat granular moringitis, um, so the GP has been prescribing some steroid based eardrops but hasn't really done much. Uh, we're still waiting for an ENT referral for this gentleman. So this is it's about the second or third time he's come in with this. Um, and ENT probably, can't speak for them, but cauterize the eardrum with some silver nitrate. So cauterizing uh, is a process of almost burning this tissue, this, this new connective tissue. Um, so you're almost kind of obliterating it, removing it, and they use silver nitrite as well. And hopefully that will help this eardrum to fully to fully heal. But you can see it now, it's just a lot more of it. And it will become even more apparent in a moment when I get more of this dead keratin and artery, this discharge off the eardrum. This particular ear canal, um, near the ear canal, it has narrowed quite a lot. So it's developed a bit of stenosis. A stenosis is a, a, a narrowing. Um, not only of the ear canal but any orifice um, and stenosis typically occurs due to chronic ear infections so the patient is suffering from chronic ear infections uh, particularly in this left ear and unfortunately the ear canal is starting to narrow a bit so it makes it a bit more tricky to get an instrumentation in so you can see this granular myringitis on the eardrum now I'm just trying to remove some dead keratin, some infected dead skin off the, off the top part of the eardrum there, the attic and also the roof of the ear canal so superiorly. So I've been quite fortunate to be doing, uh, I've worked quite closely with a, um, a colleague of mine who's an ENT consultant surgeon and when I was learning how to, learning my trade in terms of performing uh, microsuction and clinical ear care, I used to spend a lot of time that is both NHS private clinic and also help perform procedures like this. So one of the best treatments of an ear infection, if you can't see a GP or doctor or any antibiotics are not working, is to just make sure you clean as much dead skin, debris, discharge off the ear canal. It gives it some chance of recovering. So that's the patient's eardrum. You can see all that granular myringitis. I hope it doesn't send shivers up your spine like it does mine. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video guys and it's a bit of an interesting and different case for you. Um, I hope you're all keeping well and safe wherever you are in the world and I shall upload some more videos in due course. Take care, bye.